Hi, I'm George, and in this video, I'm going to be talking about digital thermometers for the E61 Brew Group. The E61 isn't actually a brew group head, but a famous revolutionary espresso machine. In 1961, the Italian company FIMA brought this innovative commercial espresso machine to the market. The machine was named the E61, getting its name from the solar eclipse that occurred over Italy in 1961. Today the name E61 is more commonly used when referring to the group head, although many of the machine's other innovations are still in use. For example, the single boiler heat exchanger. Today, the vast majority of new espresso machines sold use many of the innovations that FIMA's E61 introduced to espresso making. The problem with E61 group heads, and this is a problem in general with most espresso machines, is knowing when the group head is warm enough to pull a shot. If you're at a cafe, you'll have the machine on all day, so this isn't a problem. The problem you'll probably have is cooling it down if it's been left sitting idling for too long. For us home espresso E61 jockeys, it is a problem because we generally turn it on, wait a while, then pull a shot. But how long do you wait? How well do you really know your machine and its temperature, temperament? The generic E61 comes with a useful accessory hole on the front of its head. I say generic because there are some manufacturer variations that look like the E61 but have some differences. This accessory hole can take either a pressure manometer or a thermometer. I'm hoping that someone will soon come up with a Bluetooth enabled unit that measures both pressure and temperature during a shot. That coupled with a smartphone app would make an excellent tool for logging shot data. I write apps for a living and I'd love to have something like that to work with. If you know of anything on the market or are coming to the market, let me know in the comments down below. Thanks. I'm going to review three digital thermometers that fit the E61 accessory hole. I wasn't given any of these three products to review. All three were purchased by myself. I've already given one to a friend and I'll be putting another on an E61 that I'm restoring and will be selling on. The question for me is, which one am I going to keep? One from Geisinger in Germany, priced at 69.90. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Apologies if I'm not. Two from Coffee Sensor in Romania. Their entry model unit priced at 70 euros, and their pro model priced at 100 euros. Coffee Sensor's pro model has its origins on the other side of the Atlantic. Eric Svensson or Eric S on the homebarista.com website forum, developed this E61 thermometer, documented it, and even sold some. If you're on an espresso forum and you read someone referring to Eric's thermometer, they're referring to this thermometer and design. It has become something of a classic and benchmark for E61 temperature management. The term Eric's thermometer is often used to refer to any digital thermometers for the E61 group head. This will be why Coffee Sensor has elevated it to the grand position of Pro. Fitting a thermometer to the E61 accessory hole is extremely easy. I surprised myself how quickly it can be done when I videoed myself doing it. It took me less than a minute. All three thermometers come with the tools necessary to do the job. You'll need an Allen key to remove the grub nut covering the hole and a small spanner to tighten in the thermometer. If we look at the cross-section of an E61 group head, 
we can see where these temperature probes are positioned in relation to the flow of water. The depth of the hole, from the end of the thread to the shaft going down to the portafilter, is approximately 8mm on my own machines, which I am assuming is standard. If the probe is too long, it can interfere with and restrict the flow of water to the portafilter. If it's too short, it may not be getting the most accurate reading. The coffee sensor basic thermometer and the Geisinger have probe lengths of 7mm and 8mm respectively. In my tests, I didn't notice any change of water flow using either of them, which would be as expected. The coffee sensor pros probe was at maximum length and I did see a noticeable restriction in water flow. Adjusting it to 7.5mm in length is very simple to do, as it is an adjustable probe unlike the other two. After I'd made this adjustment, the water flow was fine. The downside, however, of being flexible is that it sticks out of the group head more noticeably, being 11mm longer overall at 73mm than the other two, which are both equal in length at 62mm. The size of the displays on the thermometers will be a matter of personal taste and convenience. I'm at an age now where I need reading glasses, and I can just about make out the temperature on the Geisinger without needing to put my glasses on. The coffee sensor's basic thermometer, however, is just too small for me to read with glasses, but it is the tidiest looking of the three sitting on the head of an E61. Its compact size doesn't detract from the beauty of the E61 group. I prefer the black fascia to the white of the Confrey Sensor Pro, although the Geisinger is available in either black or white fascias. The Coffee Sensor Pro model is a bit larger, but still too small for me to read without glasses on. Let's talk about features. All three thermometers can easily swap between centigrade and Fahrenheit. Surprisingly, the most expensive thermometer, the Coffee Sensor Pro, offers nothing other than just that feature. The cheaper basic model from Coffee Sensor has a pause button. I'm not sure how useful that is or how I would use it though. Only the Geisinger has a calibration function, whereas both Coffee Sensor models come fixed at factory calibrated temperatures. I've not used this feature of the Geisinger, but I like I have the option to do so should I decide to. Geisinger has updated their thermometer since I purchased mine. I recently received their new model for using on my La Pavone lever machine, which I'll cover in another video. The new model has changed the hold and max buttons to set time and timer start. You program the thermometer with the time in seconds, and when you're ready, press the timer start button. When the countdown ends, the screen flashes to let you know. If you have a smart skill with automatic timer, you probably won't find this feature much use. However, if you don't and you want to do something like a timed pre-infusion, you might find this a very handy feature to have. Finally, let's compare the temperature refresh rate between these three thermometers. This is the rate at which the thermometer reads the temperature and then updates its display. If you are like me and you want to know what the peak temperature was during a shot, then you'll want this refresh to be as fast as possible so that the true peak isn't missed. When I tried to live with each thermometer for a few weeks, the impression I got was that the basic model coffee sensor was slower in refresh than the Coffee Sensor Pro or the Geisinger, which both felt about the same. The advantage of videoing each thermometer being used is that it lets you accurately check the time between screen refreshes on each device. The result I got, however, really surprised me. All three thermometers refresh approximately every 0.8 seconds. It could be that the LCDs are quicker on the Coffee Sensor Pro and the Geisinger, I haven't figured out yet why I felt they were quicker. They all have their merits and all do a good job of what they do. My friend who has a coffee sensor basic model is happy with it and it works great for him. I find it difficult to recommend it though, when the Geisinger is at the same price but with additions of the ability for user calibration, the timer feature and the choice of two colours. If none of these things appeal to you, then really it's down to the personal taste and how it looks in your group head. When I got the Coffee Sensor Pro, I expected more for the extra 30 euros 
after having used the Geisinger. There's really no difference between them. If you have a non-standard E61 group head, you may need the ability to adjust the probe length. It also allows you to replace the thermometer at a later stage for a new thermometer. For that reason, I might consider the Pro over the Geisinger. I'm going to keep the Geisinger because of its larger display, which is better for my eyes. Do you own one of these devices? Which one do you have and what do you think about it? Let me and everyone else know down in the comments below. Also, if you don't own one, which one do you prefer and why? Thank you for watching this video. Please give it a like, perhaps even share it with some coffee friends, and don't forget to subscribe, as I'm planning on doing another video again soon.